Welcome back, everybody. Back in the day, action shooters were a go-to choice for quick-fire, high-octane gaming action. From Space Invaders to Contra, shooting has been a staple mechanic since gaming's earliest days. So, let's learn how to do it ourselves in Unity. Let's crack on. Continuing from our previous video about 2D player movement, here we have Shooter Man, who, at the moment, can do an awful lot of running, but no gunning. So, let's equip him with a weapon. First, to make this easier, let's zoom in a little closer so we can see Shooter Man and his weapon clearly. Then, on the player, right click, create empty game object, make sure we give it an icon so we can see it, something bright, like the circle there. Let's rename this to Weapon, then, in our scene, I'd like us to move this to the front of the weapon here. There we go. Then, we're going to need another empty game object as a child to the weapon. And this will be our fire point, where we will instantiate and shoot our bullets from. We can leave it in the same position as the weapon, right in front of the barrel of the gun. That will do just fine. With our weapon set up, let's create a new C Sharp script called Weapon Controller. Attach it to the weapon game object, then go ahead and open it up. Okay, so first let's punch in some variables. Let's start with a public transform for our fire point and a public game object called Ammo Type. What kind of shots do we want to fire? We are also going to want to control the fire rate of our weapon. So let's create some floats, a public float called shot speed. How fast do our bullets shoot from the weapon? And two public floats, shot counter and fire rate to control the speed of our weapon. And then finally, if you have animations, feel free to place your animated variables here. If you don't, do not worry, they are not necessary for this tutorial. So where you see animation, please ignore it if it doesn't apply. But if you do, don't forget to reference them in the start function like so. Next, let's create our shooting function. So underneath void update, let's create a void, which we'll call shoot. And this is what's going to instantiate a prefab from our fire point. So, every time we pull the trigger via the left mouse button, for example, we're going to instantiate a new game object, which we will call shot. And that game object we will instantiate will be that of the ammo type for the weapon. This is the bullets it will create. Of course, we need a point where we want to instantiate these bullets. And that is our fire point dot position and our fire point dot rotation because our character will be moving around from left to right in world space. So it needs to match that. Now, instantiating a bullet is all well and good, but we're going to want to apply a force to that. So we are also going to want to reference the rigid body of our shots. To do that, we will add rigid body 2D call it the shot RB and that will equal shot dot get component rigid body 2D. So every time we instantiate a shot, we are getting the rigid body 2D component from it. Then we want to apply a force to that rigid body. And we do that by stating shot RB dot add force. Then in the brackets, the point where we want to apply the force from, that will be our fire point. My character is facing right by default. So I've gone for fire point dot right multiplied by our shot speed. And like when the hammer strikes the chamber, it shoots the bullet instantly. And that is why we will use force mode 2D dot impulse to apply that immediate force that will propel our shot forward. Then the last thing we're going to do is add a kill switch to our bullets 
because we want to avoid having too many on screen at one time. That's really going to take up a lot of resources for our game. So for now, let's just type in destroy. Then in the brackets, the object we want to destroy, that will be our shot game object. And it will be destroyed after a time of one second. Now, there are more efficient ways of doing this that are a lot more resource friendly as we can instantiate our shots from a pool of objects from an array which recycles our bullets over and over. So we're not just creating a new one every time. If that's something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to prepare a tutorial on that for you. So please let me know. Now our shoot function is set up. We are of course going to want to apply an input to it. I'm going to go with if input.getMouseButton0, which is the left mouse button. And the first thing I'm going to do inside is state what our shot counter is. And our shot counter will be minus equal time dot delta time. This is going to control the rate at which we fire. For example, if our shot counter is one, then it will count down from one. When it hits zero, we will instantiate a shot. Therefore, we have a fire rate of one per second. So let's put that into action underneath in another if statement. So if our shot counter is less than or equal to zero, we want to do two things. The first is call our shoot function, instantiate our shot and reset the shot counter back to its fire rate. So shot counter will equal fire rate. If our fire rate is one, then the shot counter will return to one and count down again for an interval between shots. Now, of course, we don't want to have to wait for that interval every time we press an input. So underneath our if statement for the input, we'll add else our shot counter equals zero. So we've already got a shot in the chamber ready to go. And of course, once you've done that, feel free to apply your animations if necessary, hit save, and let's head back into Unity. Once everything has compiled, it's time to put the final details together for the weapon. So, where it's asking for the transform fire point, go ahead and drag your fire point into there like so. Underneath, it's asking for the game object of ammo type. Go ahead and place whatever prefab you have prepared for your desired ammo type. I've prepared mine from a sprite sheet, which you can download, link in the description below. And I've added to them a Circle Collider 2D, that is a trigger, because we're going to want this to react to hitting enemies or other objects. And of course, a Rigid Body 2D, in order to apply the force to the bullet. So, go ahead and place your desired ammo type in there. Then, lastly, let's give our weapon a speed. I want it to be fast, so I'm going with 20, shot counter as zero, and a fire rate of 0 0.1. I want this to be a fully automatic weapon. Hit play and give it a test. And what you should see, when you hold down the left mouse button, our weapon will fire at the desired speed and rate, and you can see our shot counter counts down between each shot, and our bullets destroy themselves over time. Awesome. However, if we were to shoot the other way, our bullets still continue to fire in the opposite direction towards the right. No problem. This is caused by the weapon not matching the local scale of the player. In the previous video of 2D player movement, we flipped our player around by its local scale on the X to minus one in order to face the left. When he faces right, that of course is going to be a value of one. So there's a quick fix for this. Let's head back into our weapon controller script. All we need to do is create a value that's going to match the local scale of the player on the X axis. So in our shoot function, let's create an integer called player direction as a function. The integer of course, being whether we're going to face left or right. Then inside, we'll start off with an if statement, and this will get the local scale 
of the player and the player is the parent game object to the weapon. So if transform.parent.localScaleX is less than 0F, so if it's minus 1 facing to the left, then we'll want to return minus 1. So the weapon will also face to the left. When we're facing to the right, of course, the value is greater than 0F. So underneath, let's just add else return plus 1 else we're facing right. With that now set up, where we are adding force to our bullet, we need to also multiply by the player direction. Give that a save, head back, and now we'll be able to shoot in the same direction the player is facing because the weapon matches the player's local scale. Fantastic. And there we go. We have created a weapon for our player character to use. So in the next video, let's look at creating some fun weapon types to mix things up a little bit. As always, thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your support and I will see you soon. Take care.